Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You've been watching the analysis right on uh, KBN TV, the finance television in Zambia. Lovely, good evening, Zambia. Good evening, Africa. Duomo, come to the analysis program right here on KBN TV from Zambia's capital city, Lusaka. With me, Innocent Piri, you can simply call me IP. I've got my two big brains in the studio as usual as we get to analyze some of the big stories that happened last week in case you missed out. Please uh, stay with us in the next one hour, 30 minutes. Of course, as usual, I've got uh, in the studio uh, both speakers with me in the studio to analyze these stories. And of course, alongside uh, our usual uh, face, his name is uh, Ambassador uh, Mukwita. Good evening, PK, and uh, good evening, Ambassador. Good evening, IP. It's good to have you back. Uh, we missed you in the office and at the studio. Mm. Your absence was definitely uh, missed, and it's good to see you You're in uh, high spirits and very Please. strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we thank the Lord, to, you know, you know, for for for, for the gift of life. Thank you so much. I yeah. was telling a colleague of mine, uh, actually is one of the viewers, who's, I mean, a keen follower of our programming, who said, uh, we missed you. I said, uh, actually, just a physical being that is uh, defeated, but the spiritual well-being of me, I'm quite strong. Indeed. Yeah. Ambassador, you're That's welcome. That's amazing. I, I, I just want to say you are looking good uh, tonight. In the I'm just indicating from you, actually. No, 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 no. I, I can't match up with that. <laughs> and good evening to our, our dear viewers for joining us as usual. Thank you so much. Uh, Pastor, <laughs> I don't know how you do it, but <laughs> when I grow up, I want to look just like you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You already are. <laughs> it's fire for fire. Thank you so yeah. much, uh, gentlemen, for coming through the program. And of course, allow me to officially welcome you. And uh, for those that could have joined us for the first time, this is a KBN, the analysis program where we state matters as they are from the journalistic uh, perspective. And of course, some of the big stories you are looking forward this evening. On number one story, we are discussing the uh, story of to deal with the miners on the Copper Belt province in Chingola. And of course, uh, where we've, uh, we are hearing stories that are. Uh, uh, several miners have been trapped in various, uh, you know, open pit uh, places, which, of course, I'm going to read a statement as we go on with the program. And, of course, government has also issued a statement in that regard, of course, expressing its uh, concern and uh, also uh, siding with uh, those that are uh, affected in uh, Chingola. And, of course, the number three story, you'll be looking at a story due with uh, Hone Bochimba Kambuli, was uh, last week uh, sentenced to five uh, months imprisonment for hate speech. On number three, we'll be looking at the whistleblower uh, journalist uh, Thomas Ziambo, who was arrested uh, last week. And of course, number five, um, uh, Miller's mouse number rather, uh, was uh, summoned the Honorable uh, Brad Mundubile, Honorable Campiongo, among other MPs for gross misconduct, as he had described it. As Shua Shua says, uh, HH must go unless he meets all the campaign promises. Uh, former President Edgar Chogalungu gives uh, marching orders to PF uh, members. Uh, EFZ condemns ongoing compensation by Attorney General, and uh, ERB maintains the December fuel price and uh, recent by elections to be discussed up on the menu. Former President Galungu's political advisor, Chris Zumanizimba, has been acquitted. These are the big stories we have this evening. But of course, like I always do it, let me give room to my two big brains, the analyst, to of course add on in case there's something that has been left out from my menu. Let me begin with you, PK, in case there's something that is burning in your heart. Yes, um, perhaps a human interest um, in a story. Mm. 
the mercy of the Lord, uh, the survival of uh, the PF Secretary General in that, uh, right. you know, uh, crash, you know, uh, involving the train, the locomotive. When I just look at the condition mm. of his car, I could tell that this must have been the hand of God right. because surviving such kind of an accident and when you look at the, the, wreck, <coughs> the wreckage, really you can tell that had it not been for the Lord, this right. one would be talking about a totally different uh, case. Mm. But I say this because that particular, um, you know, uh, area right. has become a, a very, you know, accident prone spot. Right. Because just a few days ago, there was, I think, uh, another train mm. that derailed or something. Yeah. And uh, people were going to Kafue in that direction were sort of blocked. There was a build-up of traffic. Mm. Um, so I think something needs to be done around that area. It's becoming a very uh, troublesome spot. Right. So I just thought, uh, you know, I, I could bring that uh, up. Uh, issues of safety, road safety, and all of that uh, are very important and very cardinal uh, to, to our nation. Right. Interesting. Let's have from Ambassador Nikes. There could be something left on my menu this evening. I would have loved to continue on the trajectory uh, by uh, PK right. on the danger on that road. I <clears throat> recall vividly as a uh, uh, Chargé d'Affaires or acting head of mission when right. I was based in uh, Stockholm, uh, Sweden, <clears throat> that uh, we have reached an act and signed a memorandum of understanding <clears throat> to do a railway line revamp it to ultra modern days at a cost of about $750 million, which was going to mean that we're going to remove all of the traffic that right. goods have and put it on a railway track and mm. make the roads much safer. Right. And that's another story. Right. For me, my biggest story right now is one, the, uh, which I think we probably haven't uh, mentioned, is the continued Mm -hmm. senseless loss of lives of children and mothers, pregnant and crippled people in, in, in Gaza as the war and bombardment continues. The second one for me is the continued rise mm -hmm. of the cost of food in Zambia as inflation <coughs> starts teetering towards 13% and as the dollar the kwacha rather continues to be the worst performing currency in the world after the peso. Mm. I think we probably should look. We'll get to that. Worry not, Ambassador. Of course, uh, let me also just um, you know congratulate uh, our, of course, our sisters and brothers who are commemorating uh, the our disability day as of uh, today. We thank <coughs> you so much, and of course, uh, I wish you the best. That indeed uh, the commemoration does not end here. But we shall see much of uh, the, I know, the actions uh, in various uh, uh, sectors of uh, the economy. Let's begin from where PK started. The story of a road accident in which Honorable Rafa Nakachinda was involved in. Uh, maybe Honorable Rafa Nakachinda becomes a topic of the subject. The reason being that he is a public figure. But uh, you and I are aware that uh, there could be some other, you know, lives that have been lost in that regard who have not been published in this, uh, you know, era. And again, you rightly put it that it's the same spot at which several lives have been, you know, uh, lost. You know, I remember, I think, the last, the last incident, uh, which I personally covered, that was in 2020, where two people had, you know, lost their lives on that, on the very spot. And what is what is happening? What can we do to preserve lives through road accidents? Um, I know that um, I'm not too sure if uh, what government is doing extends that far, but I know that they've now implemented the um, cameras, yeah. uh, you know, traffic uh, cameras, um, and and they'll be capturing mm. the speeds and all of that. But I'm not too sure if it extends all the way. Uh, to that, but much more than that, we need uh, a lot more of road signage. Right. Uh, because in Zambia, unfortunately, even when there's a speed camera ahead or you need to reduce the speed or so, you will rather find cops hiding in a, 
you know under under a tree yeah. you know or they've parked their car strategically somewhere where you cannot spot them so in the, in in their minds what they are really trying to do is to catch you mm. not to prevent an accident from happening i think we need a, a mindset change that prevent. yes we need more of enforcement um mm. and that is centered around <coughs> preventive measures than enforcement that is centered around conviction um we, we I, I mean ambassador you know has has traveled widely you have traveled widely in developed economies even when there is a, a camera you know a speed camera ahead they begin to warn you through road signage well before you reach that place that mm. slow down there's a camera ahead slow down there's a camera ahead so the the more you see those things the more your mind begins to adjust i need to slow down but unfortunately with our you know law enforcement uh, set up in in zambia and as far as road uh, traffic is concerned and and the police on the road is concerned they would rather hide and catch you, park you, and then you go to their car where they, mm. they uh, receive their 50 quarters, <laughs> you know, they receive the 50 quarters and let you go. Uh, they, they, they really perpetrate, you know, corruption, you know. The road traffic officers are very corrupt. No one would, rec would refuse a 50 quarter, I can dare you that. No one would refuse a 100 quarter, I can dare you that. Um, and we shouldn't be doing that. Mm. We need... Um, more visibility of warning people slow down here the speed limit is this we need all of that and a lot more of public uh, awareness mm. yeah right let's hear from ambassador the same subject on the same subject uh, i was part of a team that was trying to make sure that we reduce the number of deaths on our roads uh, according to official statistics which actually need to be updated about 2000 zambians die every year uh, from road carnage mm -hmm. when you crunch the numbers which i'm not even very good at mm -hmm. it's about 166 people dying every month yeah which is very bad and one of the main reasons for these deaths is because of uh, the fact that the roads are congested mm -hmm. they are sharing traffic with uh, heavy goods with uh, trucks uh, that are transporting all sorts of things. But we could have reduced this number of deaths if we had removed this heavy traffic mm. from the roads onto the trains. We know what the problem is. I can tell you that I did reports on this fact. I was in Sweden for about uh, almost four years. And during that period when we were working on this issue, uh, the, a road safety expert told me that there had not been a single death on the road in 10 years. Lovely. Yeah, mm. which was a catastrophe. But for us, 166 people per month, that is like genocide deaths. Right. We should stop that. The answer is there. It's blowing in the wind. We have to separate goods transport and set it on the railway tracks mm. i can't say the idea pk that. of uh, introducing uh, these uh, you know top brothers uh, you know in various roads was basically to maintain these roads to plow back you know take back the money to maintain these roads from the time we you know uh, came up with this initiative have we seen any improvement in terms of of our roads it's very difficult to justify that um, that money that uh, is being collected through the toll gates is actually being channeled to the right places. It's very difficult. One would have expected that actually the the um, road what are they called? There are two institutions. There's the uh, NF National Roads Fund yes. and the Road R Development RDA. RDA. Yeah. I don't even know which one of the two gets that money and spends it where. One would have expected that one of those, whichever one gets the money um, from Control 99, uh, that is collected through targets, must periodically publish to say we collected so much and we spent it here. 
so far we don't know whether that money really is plowed back on the road where it comes from or it is diverted right now you you you've seen uh, press reports that um, uh, there is a 15 billion deficit uh, in you know in revenue collection you know from 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 ZRA uh, and and if 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 that's really the case um, you would find that the government would definitely divert that money from from the road, you know, from the targets to go and fund maybe salaries for civil servants. That's that, that's very possible. So it, in the absence of access to information, you you realize that there is a lot of money collected through, from the targets, mm. but no one can account for it how it's been spent over the years. Mm. So it's it's very unfortunate. Right, it's been a bad week. Uh, I should make mention uh, coming from the story of Hone Borafa Nakachinda was involved in, road, in a road accident. And of course, uh, now we go to our first story uh, that talks to the, the trapped miners on the Copper Belt province. Now, let me just read a part of uh, the story in this regard before Ambassador, you come in. Uh, there is a statement here that has been issued by Minister of uh, uh, Copper Belt province, Minister rather, where he says, uh, the headline is saying, ignore those, uh, the social media uh, minor trap information. Uh, Kuba Belt Province Honorable Boresha Matambo, alongside his ma mines and commerce counterparts, Honorable Paul Kawuswe and Honorable Chipokamlenga, earlier today visited the open pit mine in Chingola where miners are being trapped. He said, according to the information at the open pit mine, so far there are three places where the miners are being trapped and about uh, 31 names have been collected and withheld for further uh, verification. Uh, Mr. Matambo said among the trapped uh, were miners from other, other towns like Luansha, uh, Kito Mufulira, Chingola alongside other areas. He has urged members of the public to ignore the purported numbers of uh, people alleged to have to have died uh, according to social media. That's a brief story that has come from Honorable Matambo, the provincial minister for Copper Belt uh, province. Uh, Pika, when you received this information, uh, you remember I think you were among the uh, first people that began to update uh, you know, me uh, together with the ambassador later on who came in to also begin to uh, you know, uh, affiliate myself to what was going on. What came in your mind? It, it was a very saddening mm. uh, piece of news. Right. When I learned about it, when I heard about it, my heart just sank and um, I began to realize that um, Zambia has been a mining country for so many years. Right. Even if it is so-called open pit illegal mining, mm. some safety measures of some sort should have been put in place to avoid such catastrophes. I am being reminded that such a thing only happened way back uh, around 1970. Mm. I wasn't even born then. Oh yeah? Right? It happened way back in... You can imagine where I was if you were not born, both of you. Thanks, I don't know about <laughs> I was. <laughs> I don't think there was an idea that IP was going to be born one day. <laughs> So there, there, there was that um, Frila mine uh, disaster. Yeah. Now, what I'm trying to say is it's a very sad development. Um, really, we shouldn't be talking about miners dying needlessly in that manner. Uh, some safety measures of some sort. The very fact that we are acknowledging it's illegal mining already sends a huge you know, um, uh, red, red flag. Why must we have what is called illegal mining and no one cares to monitor what's happening there? And if we are calling it illegal mining, when they mine, where do they take whatever they're mining? What is the value chain? Who procures? Who buys? How are they paid? Who accounts for that illegal mining uh, that is happening? The very fact that it is there and it's being perpetuated um, under the eye of... Uh, uh, successive government mm. is, is, is a problem in itself. It's a pity that we are, we are only <coughs> awakening to sad news that has happened as a result of a problem that we could have addressed. It is very, very saddening. Uh, secondly, 
It's the issue of why would people risk their lives in the manner that they have risked their lives? Mm. It is because they're looking for survival. They're looking for means. Those are, look at the number of people who are on that thing that they're showing who have gone to those sites. Look, look, you can see that those are mostly young people looking for survival, looking for a job, looking for means to feed their families. Therefore, they would rather risk their own lives at the, you know, um, you know, as a way of uh, finding means of feeding their families. Mm -hmm. Now, it is very unfortunate that we are here today talking about um, numbers that we do not even know. The, the statement, I know you are reading the statement from the minister, from but there is a statement from the vice president who is, who is the acting president mm. uh, which came out today. Yes. And in my view, it has come too little, too late. This is three days after the incident. After the incident. That's when we are having... Three uh, days. Three days. That's when we are having a high-level statement being issued by the acting president. A crisis like this required mm. that there is presence of the topmost uh, member of cabinet, uh, if not the president himself or the acting president, uh, right on the scene. Right. Because I, I, we know what crisis communication is. I, mm. I, I teach crisis communication. I train in crisis communication. One of the requirements is uh, deliver the highest level of authority, whether in a company or whatever, mm. at the scene. Big uh, CEO or minister, deliver them within the first one hour of um, mm. a, a crisis happening. To have a statement coming mm. from government only three days much later, and the worst off, it's a speculative kind of statement mm -hmm. very sad indeed that we do not know the full numbers and the 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 the, the acting president has admitted in a statement mm -hmm. that we do not know the number of people who have been trapped mm -hmm. and we do not know their condition that's how sad the situation is we shouldn't be here it shouldn't have happened this can be avoided if we have a proper policy on mining and even at least some level of loose arrangement to supervise illegal mining if we want to continue having illegal mining taking place. Mm. Let me get from Ambassador. I think PK brings out something very critical when he, you know, he, had, he, he bemoans, you know, when, when he expresses his concern that uh, this statement from the Vice President is coming a little bit uh, too late because the incident happened about two days ago and uh, it comes three days ago. And then... Again, I want to maybe leave a room that maybe she was trying to g collect information, maybe from the technocrats and stuff like that. Uh, I'm saying this, you know, with the, a, a mind of argument within myself because I remember there was a time when the people of Maziopa actually we found themselves within the gunshots by the ZNS officers when the Maziopa residents uh, PK were protesting at a time for the, for a piece of land. And uh, the ZNS officers went and uh, uh, four people were killed on the spot. What did Mwanawasa do at the time? He, he, he himself went there physically and issued a statement. And he said, from today onwards, no one will dis uh, displace them. This is their own piece of land. He never waited for technocrats to, be, uh, to give him a statement. We can take it again to Honorable, uh, the former vice president, Madam um, you know, you don't get win at the time when the city market PK was gutted. You remember, I personally interviewed her. She was the first person to visit the site and issued a statement in that regards. Whether that statement was misleading or not, because I think she had said the people that had gutted that city market were the uh, it was a uh, an act of sabotage. The statement never came out whether <laughs> to substantiate how sabotaging it was. But the point I'm trying to underline here is that a leader must be able to run on the, on, on, the, uh, on the site and issue a statement. I think that's what PK is talking talk about. Okay. Um, I will actually skip uh, beyond what uh, PK said. Right. I'd like to look into the camera and say, President Haga in the Hichilema, wherever you are right now, whether it's in Dubai at the COP28, 57 Zambians have died needlessly. Why have you not cut your trip short to come back to Zambia and talk to 57 grieving families 
and explain to them that you are very sorry that there is illegal mining going on due to abject poverty. The, the number is not known. We have an official, we have yeah. a number. We have a speculative number. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, in the absence yeah. of a, an official one, yes, please. we still have a number. Whether it is 50 mm. or 60 or people dead, or 31 is, or 100, yeah, the numbers could rise. Mm. But the point I am trying to make is, President Haga in the HLM, if 50 people have died, or 60 people have died, don't you think as president of the Republic of Zambia that has 19 million, 20 million people, you should cut short whatever you are doing at an environmental conference to come back to Zambia and mourn with the people that have lost their lives. In my view, what has happened is not really just illegal mining. It is a symptom of a broken system of social, political, and economics. It is a show that our economic system is not working. The jobs that the president of Zambia promised to young Zambians when he was campaigning, mm. that Sepela, Mwema Youth, when we come in, we'll give you jobs, are no longer available. Right. It is a symptom that shows that the fuel prices that he said shall be reduced by cutting down the middleman is not a dream that is reliable. It is a symptom that shows that the fertilizer, the cheap fertilizer that he had promised the people of Zambia to come is not coming anywhere nearby. The end is nigh. Hence, we have a number, 50, 60, 70, call it 100, of people who are engaged in illegal mines. Because you know the biggest culprits in a broken economic system are parents. Right. Parents will do anything to ensure that they their the son, their daughter, their siblings all have three square meals. So, Mr. President, if 60 or 100 Zambians have died, why would you still want to stay in an air-conditioned conference room in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, when we need you here in Zambia to come and say, the end is nigh. On my watch, no other Zambian shall die doing illegal mining. On my watch, no other Zambian shall die in the sun looking for a job because this is what I promised you. I could go on and on, but the point I am trying to make is the statement by the vice president doesn't wash. The, president, the statement by the three cabinet ministers mm. that you mentioned doesn't wash. History abounds with real leaders that have come up every time that their people have died. They say that there is nothing much more grieving and creepy mm. than a crying leader. A leader that comes up and say, I have heard your cries. I have seen 57, 60 people, even 40, because not a single life is supposed to die on your watch as commander-in-chief. President Hakainde Hichilema, come back to Zambia. Talk to us. Zambia is a, a very understanding country. Zambians are very understanding people. That's why they put you into office. You can't stay three days out of the country when 60 people have died and mm. you say nothing. Let me get from uh, PK. Um, do we need the president at this particular point? Or maybe we are well represented by the vice president. We are talking about 31. Uh, I know Ambassador keeps on mentioning 60, 70. These are just missing names, by the way, missing uh, citizens who have been trapped in these uh, uh, open pit mines. So first of all, let's talk about the, the mystery of numbers. Mm. From his point of view and my point of view, your point of view, as journalists, as journalists, yeah. numbers are very important because numbers tell the story. These are human beings we are talking about. Every story uh, is about, about, it's either it's about proximity, it's about prominence, 
it's about uh, uh, disaster unusualness impact and all of this so when you talk about whether it's 31 families mm. uh, or or 70 10 whatever this is a crisis and i must admit what the ambassador said in my view this crisis has been mishandled uh, and it's regrettable it's been mishandled by the 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 the, the, the command chain within the government right. looks like no one really knew who should be on the scene uh, when how to escalate to what when to issue a statement and all of that mm. and worse off that the head of state has been absent i'm not sure whether they were waiting for him to call them and say don't issue a statement until i come back or don't go to the site until i should be the first one to be on site but if that was the psychology uh, and the thinking really as ambassador said and i totally ad agree with him the president needed to cut short his trip there is nothing more important in dubai than securing the lives of your own people who voted for you who put you in power they are more important than whatever is being discussed at the COP20 uh, in, in Dubai. Mm. The head of state needed, the day he had, he received the briefing on Thursday or Friday, that day, he should have jumped on the next plane to come back to show the seriousness. If he didn't want to come, his number two who was acting vice president, uh, who is acting president, <coughs> someone needed to put her on a chopper and fly her to Chingola. The vice president, the acting president, is issuing a statement from Lusaka, has never gone to the site of, of, it has been mishandled. This crisis has been mishandled by the mm. government. In fact, it has been underplayed. Right. We needed the senior most person in government. Pres That's a crisis. I'll give you an example. In America, mm. I think during Barack, Ob Barack Obama, some guy went into a school and started shooting at some kids and some kids died in the in the process mm -hmm. barack obama had to face the nation and say america under my watch whoever is behind this shall be shall be arrested and brought to to book right. we have seen this happen in a, a lot more other uh, in uh, south africa yeah. there, there was some president Mar 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 yes there were uh, uh, riots and uh, some yes. miners died and President Cyril, Cyril Ramaphosa, Ramaphosa had to suspend all business mm. and address, and address that. that. So we have a lot yeah. of examples, both internationally, uh, regionally and next door here in, mm. in South Africa. Mm. This matter has been underplayed, mishandled and uh, it's very regrettable that we must even sit here discussing instead of saying we thank the government for what they've mm. done and, and and in any case even the statement from the the vice president, the vice president mm. at this stage mm. be, because of the in the, the intelligence and the system i can assure you there is a number because look at uh, the gaza mm -hmm. the gaza incident yeah all those that were killed, arrested, and whatnot, they they created a board like this. Yeah. Where they ran, families, the, they ran the names. Yes, where the families were yeah. saying, we are missing a person. They take a picture, they go and put there. And mm. those pictures, when they start counting, is to say potentially they are either dead or they are uh, missing and they are, um, uh, they are, what do you call those? Uh, buried in rubble yeah they're still uh, being looked for yeah whatever but what i'm trying to say is in chingola and the towns you mentioned there are families who are saying we have not seen our brother ip or whoever since thursday and that is when the accident happened they have called their relatives countrywide and they're saying this person is not here there must be someone who can account for a missing person one way or the other. Yeah. We cannot say we do not know the number. We can actually say so far we do not know the number. However, mm. indicatively, the records and verified records show that mm. about mm. 50 people are and missing. Unverified records. Yes. And verified records show that about 60 people, 30 people are missing. Mm. Somehow create a narrative that begins to show that you are in charge and at least you have <laughs> apparatus to begin to pinpoint, you know, you know things that even though you are, we, you, we are focusing at uh, 
this waterlogged area and pumping water and I, I, I'm, I'm happy that the commandos are on site now but at least begin to show that there is some level of control and you have a way of gathering information even to um, you know uh, make some unverified kind of estimation yeah. mm. of how many people may be missing can how can we do ambassador with the you know an opinion that may come through where somebody will tell you that the president wherever he is or he was um there is an indication that whether he's, he's within or not but uh, that's a story for another day is securing our economy so that meeting is attending is equally important just like <laughs> the lives of those individuals or those families we are talking about in chingwana I, I know the meeting that the president is attending. I attended it on behalf of President Edgar Lungu in Bonn in 2017. Right. And I attended it again on behalf of President Edgar Lungu in Katowice, Poland uh, in uh, 20, uh, uh, what do you call it, after 2017, 2018. Mm. So I know that uh, it's not a Bonn <coughs> crusher. I know that it's not uh, uh, the end of the world if President uh, Haka in the HLM and didn't uh, 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 attend that meeting. And in any case, uh, not to throw a damper mm. on the government of Zambia is uh, we are one of the lowest, or if anything, non emitter. We are not industrialized. Come on, uh, we, we, we don't. We are not throwing out fusion and pollution out there. What do we do? I mean, uh, our mining companies barely exist mm -hmm. at the barest level. Our forests, you know, just exist, which we, wipe. we understand that uh, our president is trying to sell some of these uh, carbon, uh, you know, issues to the United Arab Emirates. Mm -hmm. So if President Haka in the Hichilema attended the COP28 or not, nobody would have really bothered or missed him compared to if President Haka in the Hichilema was present mm. at the funeral of 30 or 50. Mind you, a loss of a life is a loss of a life. It doesn't matter whether it's one. I know PK mentioned that numbers matter a lot, especially for us who are in the issues of numbers, mm -hmm. proximities, and relevance. A loss of one Zambian life, especially for a population of 20 million people, is a huge loss. I go back to the clarion call that I made once again, that I think the team around President Haka Inde Hichilema failed him once again. I keep saying that I believe President Haga in the is a great guy, which is why Zambians 2.8 million voted for him. So I keep wondering, is it himself digging holes around himself or is it people around him digging holes to make sure that he becomes the first Zambian president to only save one term? Because here is an opportunity to have worn hearts and minds. This is a great opportunity. Sadly, 60 people have died. But it, you are saying great opportunity, but it's a very sad... It's a sad, great opportunity. You and I are into public relations and we know that you can turn a crisis into a win. So I wonder, why has the president's team failed but, uh, but to make him win from this huge loss the, the, that we have. The, the head of communication was at his farm while the president was in He was? Dubai. Really? Yeah, I mean, I saw, I saw him uh, plowing at his farm when the president is in Dubai. So how do you expect... That is, being that is to, use, uh, to, to use State Council uh, John Sangwa's words, that is crazy. <laughs> how can the chief communications person be at his farm while the president is at a, a very important, mm, uh, is, at a very important summit it's in not, Dubai. It's not for us to answer. Okay, I, I mean, I just think there is a little bit of a disconnect here. Maybe yeah. it says that the president does not care about his communication person. 
that he's able to do his own communication yeah. or maybe he doesn't have any confidence in the communications persons to be with him. Either way, the thing is uh, the president must come out of this smelling like a million dollars if he knows what is I need, good I need to him. add right. something. I, I yes, know please. we need to move on, but I need to add something. Just yeah. to put this into context. Mm. You remember the, the, the Gabon disaster? Indeed. Mm. Okay. Um, people who perished on that uh, fateful uh, plane crash, yes, please. Zambian soccer players, were somewhere around 30? Yes. The, 30, yeah. including the crew yes. and support staff. It now, was uh, one of the saddest days very in sad. the entire history but of our country. But you could see how the yeah. president then let President Frederick Schuller, Frederick how Schuller. involved in he Schuller. was yeah. throughout the process, in how the Schuller. state machinery kicked in you know, throughout the process. That is the level of engagement we are talking about. Just to put this into context. No, 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 you are right. I mean, because, you know, if the president does not come in, and I know we have spent a lot of time on this mm. issue, IEP, yep. you are our boss here. Yes, please. Uh, please forget about boss. Uh, no, it is well. And myself. But yeah. the reason why we are saying this is people start asking questions. Does the president care about his people dying? Or he is more preoccupied mm. about the economics than he is occupied about his people. Has the president and his team found out why there is 60 illegal miners? In the 21st century in Zambia, that has been involved in mining for more than 100 years, long before even the colonialists came mm. in. Should we still be having people dying at a mining accident? But more or so, much, much bigger thing is the president promised jobs, legal jobs, well-paying jobs. Why do we have 57 people die illegally? Mm. 57, 60, 30, 20. They are hiding the number. But like uh, PK has said, there's going to be a time when that board is going to come out. So the biggest question is, my challenge always comes to mm. our friends in the media. Can you please go and find out why are we having 60 or 70 people dying from illegal mining? Is there something that has broken down in our country that we cannot create jobs that people will do illegal jobs where right. they will say I'm gonna die for this job just so that I can send my kid to school right those questions will continue of course being asked uh, let's move on ambassador and now we go to our story number three uh, of course while looking at uh, the story uh, you know where Honorable Chishimba Kambwiri was last week a sentence to five months in prison imprisonment with hard labor for hate speech that's one of the big stories, and this is a story that, of course, that, uh, I mean, this is a video that was captured prior to the, to the, to the elections, PK, in 2021, uh, where Honorable Kambwiri appeared on a, on a radio station uh, issuing some uh, tribal remarks. And uh, this matter has been pursued until last week uh, when the uh, judiciary or the court decided to pass his final judgment. Right. Um, yes, something to be said mm -hmm. about that. Um, uh, Mr. Chishimba Kambwili is, mm -hmm. is a politician, is a public figure. Um, it is expected, first of all, we all need to live the leg in the legacy of Kenneth Kaunda, right. who propagated one Zambia, one nation. And one of the things that uh, Kaunda did was it doesn't matter whether you come from northern province, he will post you to go and work in western province. He will get <laughs> people from western province and send them to eastern province. Mm. And this resulted... I am in, testimony. Yes. <laughs> this, this resulted into yeah. intermarriages, learning of yeah. other people's cultures and what, and begin to look at each other as brothers and sisters. That I will not look at you and think that you come from this region like we are seeing right now. Mm -hmm. The very fact that someone could be convicted of that means in this case it's, it's just a, a tip of the iceberg. There is a bigger and deeper problem that we can actually have someone being convicted over something that was never 
head of mm -hmm. in the days of uh, Kaunda, in the days of Chiloba. This thing of tribalism is something that we must all condemn. And if it takes the conviction of Mr. Kambwili to teach someone a lesson, so be it. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. most uh, you know, people who have discussed this have argued to say, Mr. Chimba Kambwili is not the only person who has uh, issued uh, what you might call hate speech or tribal remarks. Mm. He is one of the many. But why is it that then the law is being applied selectively? And I've read a lot of stories and comments on social media, in the press, and people are saying there is a lady in the Kafiwe called the Wumba She's Malambo. a mayor, actually. Yeah. Yes, Wumba Malambo. Yes. She's, a, she's a mayor under mm. this uh, mm. uh, UPND. She uttered the same words that uh, Mr. Chimbagambwiri uttered, mm. almost. Okay? She has never been arrested. Mm. She is still a mayor. Uh, recently, others are saying there was uh, the incident of Mr. Uh, Siakalima. Mm. The Minister of Education. The Minister of Education who said the people of uh, Lopula 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 suffer mm. from the poverty, disease, of, the the poverty the of, the, yeah. of the mind. Yeah. The, there was another case recently, also yeah. high level. Okay, Menda. But look okay, at the called the church, the Lucifer's and certain Lucifer's. He has yeah. never been arrested. So mm. what we are saying is we abhor, we condemn, we 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 do not subscribe to anyone who is peddling hate speech or tribalism. Mm. That should not be happening. I'll give you this man, uh, he said is an example. <laughs> uh, and I can also give myself as an example. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You understand? He did. My, my, <laughs> my, my first born daughter, her name is Liseli. And your wife is? Namakao. My sister, your lousy sister. You, know, you understand? <laughs> my, 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 little, my little one, the, the last born, is Witumelo. Witumelo. I mm. come Which from Northern. Yeah. She comes from Western. Yeah. In our house, there is no tribe. Yeah. We are one. Right. And that is the kind of picture we must be having. And you mm. know, as a pastor, let me say this. We have different pastors. You have Bemba pastors, Laws pastors, mm. Tonga pastors. Now, yeah. if this thing of tribalism continues, people will be saying, who is your pastor there? Yeah. Oh, what he, tribe is it? What tribe is it? I will not go. <laughs> you, 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 you see how bad it gets? Yeah. It's very ugly. And that thing must not be tolerated. So, yes. If Mr. Shimbakamwili yeah. is guilty of the crime he committed, uh, well deserved, okay? Mm -hmm. But what we are saying is, if Wumba Malambo committed the same crime as Mr. Kamwili, can she be arrested? Mm -hmm. Mr. Siakalima, can he be, can he be arrested? Uh, and all of those who have done the same thing. And it was actually, PK, not to disrupt you, it was actually during the same period, uh, you know, when Honebo Shimbakamwili appeared on a radio station, on the other side, within the short period of time, Mumba Manambo also goes to appear uh, at a rally. And like says, in a sort of a response. Something like that. Uh -huh. It's time to vote for our own. Yeah. Those sentiments are there. You if know, they, as uh, you submit, then I go to ambassador. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I've, I've submitted. Mm -hmm. I have said, and this is part of the analysis, right. that the law must never be applied uh, selectively. Just because Mr. Kambuli is not in government, he then is guilt of the crime mm. that he committed, yet the same crime has been committed by others, and they are there enjoying T-bone mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and uh, sitting in air-conditioned offices at the expense of taxpayers' money. That is very unfortunate, that is very selective, and I think whoever is the, in charge of making sure that some other people are uh, convicted, others should be that animal farm mentality must be condemned. Ambassador, can we say that um, the names mentioned here, and the name of uh, Umba Malambo, the council chairperson for Kafue, under the UPND ticket, uh, should Batuke Menda be worried upon seeing that Honorable Kambwiri has been convicted? I think they should be worried. But let me just move back again mm. uh, to the issue PK had mentioned. Mm. Uh, I was born in Mongo, Lewanika General Hospital mm. in the early 70s. Uh, my first primary school was uh, Ituna Primary School in Kasama. Mm. <laughs> Moved it's over there <laughs> to go to Mutende Primary School in Mansa. From there I moved on to uh, Mansa Secondary School before we 
eventually came to Lusaka and Livingstone. Mm. In class, in Mansa and Kasama, I am the one who used to read Chekesoni, Angiro Busoj, Chekesoni, Wamusanga no Mshanga Waevang, Pio Navera, Uo Uman of Fiala, Omina Limo, all these things. Now, uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, just put back into perspective what PK said about the integration, the greater integration that mm. uh, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, our first president of Zambia, did to try and say that, you guys, you may come from 73 tribes, but that should not bother you at all. To use uh, number 44, Barack Obama's words, what unites us? is much bigger than that which divides us. So I, I am actually concerned to see that we can actually have a hate crime, a hate tribal crime in a Christian tribe nation, in Zambia, in, in a, a Christian, Christian nation, nation, where PK is married mm. to my sister. My wife, Elaine, is Tonga. I never even knew she is Tonga because she grew up and was born in the copper belt, which is the melting pot. Everybody went there to go and work and mine copper and stuff. Her parents got married, not on tribe. Now we are getting a situation where we are beginning to label this. I tell you, today it is Chishimba Kambwili. Mm -hmm. What happens when the other guy sues and says, I was also called Bemba? What happens when the other guy calls and says, I was victimized or I was name shamed because I'm Kaluwale. What happens? Mm. We start dividing Zambia. In the 21st century, I think it is totally wrong. In fact, I think this is a matter that should have been sorted out at arbitration stage. But now you have taken this matter to court and you have jailed Mr. Chishimba Kamwili. Mm. People will start asking the same questions that PK was asking. What happened when Batuke Imenda called Bishop, Archbishop, Alec Banda, a Lucifer. Satanist and the Lucifer of Zambia. of Zambia, a man of God ordained by the Holy Father the whole, from the Holy See. You are a Lucifer, you are a Satan, you are bad. We don't care about the schools that you have been building. We don't care about the, 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 the churches that you have been building. We don't care about the fact that you've been going to the far flungest areas where there isn't even a single road. But you are Catholic, you are a Lucifer. What happens when another person comes up and says, you said we have a poverty on the mind? You know, these things have a way of coming back to us. Mm. I am not the one who is a priest here. My brother is a pastor. I think there is a chapter in the Bible that says, our sins shall always seek us out. Right. They will always come to bring us up to this hatred where we start fighting and killing each other because of the weaknesses of the things that I have done. Right. An appeal yet again mm -hmm. is some of these issues are political issues. Deal with them politically. Do mm -hmm. not take them to police. Do not take them to the courts. Mm -hmm. Do not escalate the situation. Whenever you have an opportunity, if you can de-escalate everything, de-escalate it. Right. PK, just I hope you can spend a minute. Today I don't intend to go beyond uh, my programming schedule. Uh, let's try to cruise. Uh, let's look at the arrest of um, Thomas Ziambo, the journalist from uh, a Whistleblower. You know, Whistleblower is one of the, you know, a critical, you know, online uh, media platform where, uh, of course, sometimes we do, from time to time, we see some investigative stories being shared. He's a brave guy. Yeah, uh, but Tom, he's a journalist. Thomas Ziambo is a journalist and he's a brave guy. I'll tell you this, you, mm. are, you are in the media, I'm a journalist, and uh, Ambassador Mkweta here is, is, is a journalist. Mm. There are very few journalists who will get a story and will write it. Right. Even when they know that this story will not go down well, with the government. Right. Now, in, the, in, in journalism, one of our defenses, number one, is truth. Yep. Number two, another defense 
you know, uh, as a journalist, mm -hmm. is that public interest mm -hmm. must override whatever it is that you are scared of writing. If a story uh, has got public interest overriding your fears, you must go ahead and publish it. Right. Even if it means it, that story will put you in trouble, the mm -hmm. court, you are going to submit before the court that I wrote this story, mm -hmm. I did this story because of who? Public, public interest. interest. National and, uh, interest. National interest. Mm -hmm. And also, there is truth in this. Here are the documents yeah. to prove. That is what governments in Africa and the world do not want to hear. Mm -hmm. That's why you see certain things, they, will, they want to commit crime in the name of who? Secret, confidential, it is labeled, it is classified. It is not classified, you're just <laughs> practicing an illegality. I like the likes of Thomas Ziambo. That is the kind of journalist I love, who is always writing things in the public interest, not because you are scared of a politician, not because you, are, you want an appointment, not because you want business favors. Mm. That is cowardice, that is not journalism, that is complicity with criminals. We need people like Thomas Ziambo. Mm. I do not like the fact that it's behind bars. And I do not like the fact that this government <clears throat> promised that they were going to remove a cyber crime law from our statutes, but they are using it right. to cripple people like Thomas yeah. Ziambo. I do not think that this government should continue to use that, that law of cyber, you know, mm. Uh, whatever they call it. Mm. They condemned mm. it <laughs> when PF was in power. There is no way they should be using it. There was a pledge actually where President Daikendi Shema said uh, this is going to be one of the first laws to be repealed. Oh, it is one of the last laws you will ever touch. <laughs> wow. Let's hear from Ambassador. I will, just ride on. I, will just, I will just ride on uh, uh, PK's issue. For me, this story of the arrest of Thomas Ziambo is much bigger than Thomas Ziambo. Right. It again comes back right onto the forefront, on the patio of President Haka in the Hichilema's, uh, uh, you know, uh, campaign promises. There shall be freedom of the press. There shall be freedom of expression. There shall be rule of the law. And the people that ensure that President Haka in the Hichilema is in office today are people who worked underground in the media that could not go perhaps restricted for one reason or another into the mainstream media. It was people like Thomas Ziambo and others we can't mention because it would be legitimizing some rug online medias coming on the board. So I would have thought that having assumed the highest office in the land uh, through the, 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 the pedestal that was given to him by the media he would have paid special attention to the media and said, I will protect you as the media because I would have never become the seventh president of Zambia if I didn't have uh, free expression, if I didn't have KBN TV, if I didn't have Hot FM, if I didn't have Radio Phoenix, if I didn't have the whistleblower. So, President Hichilema, what has changed? How come a guy like Thomas Ziambo, whom you were terror hiring with, you were chewing leather together, today is an enemy? So if Thomas Ziambo is an enemy today of the President Haga in the Islam administration, I shudder to think what will happen to Kennedy Mambwe, who is the owner and CEO of KBN TV. Mm. I shudder to think what will happen to the guy who runs Power FM. I shudder to think what will happen to the guy that... Because you know, there is always small fires. They burn around and they always do explode into something big. So we have to appeal now to the Law Association of Zambia, to the Zambia Conference of Bishops, to the uh, Evangelical <coughs> Fellowship of Zambia, to OSIDA and several other institutions, including the joint opposition political parties, to say, can we all please implore, right. make a call to President Haka in the HLM and say, President, 
when is it going to stop? And I know people always say, but why do you keep mentioning the president? Mm. In Zambia, the president is the alpha and the omega. The buck stops at the president. Right. So I won't. Let's spend a minute again, um, Ambassador also PK. Let's go to story, of course, uh, where Honorable Mao Sampa, the material member of parliament, is back in the news. They expelled. The expelled um, material member of parliament uh, is back in the news. And of course, this time around, he seemed to be full in charge of the PF. Last week, we did see some documents that were, I mean, uh, uh, some st stories uh, running around or flying around that uh, he's been now legitimized by the Registrar of Societies as the PF president. Yesterday, he issued, uh, that was yesterday, actually, he issued, a, you know, about uh, seven letters summoning. <laughs> <laughs> about seven members of parliament. One of them is uh, Honorable uh, Brian Munduwile and uh, also Honorable uh, uh, Stephen Campiongo and six others. It is very sad that um, yet again we are here uh, talking about what we should have been proud of as a democracy uh, in Zambia. And worse off is that uh, I, we all know that this matter is before the courts of law and some things that are being done with impunity shouldn't right. be done. For instance, the, the, the one that they've transferred was the uh, registrar uh, of society. Mende. Ms. Ms. Mende. Mende. M-H-E-N-D-E. -E. Produced Mende. a list to say, we have, I am the one in charge. I have not changed the office bearers. They transferred her using state institutions, brought in somebody, and they said, you need to change this. They change that, and who do they give? The first person to give to is Mao Sampa, and Mao Sampa says, here you are now. I am now the president. I'm the don. But this is a matter <laughs> that is in court, and all of the manipulation happening there shouldn't be happening. The question is, does this government respect the rule of law? Does this government respect the judiciary and the judicial process? I do not know if they respect that. But for me, really, the one that I feel for the most, I feel for Mao Sampa and his political career. Because maybe it is, maybe I don't know if at all uh, he has been paid to do what he is doing. Because really, if he loves even the party that is claiming to want to lead, he should take a, a back seat and reason with all the faction uh, groups and say, can we regroup, can we build and work but, together? Yes, but clearly he's on a trajectory where he's not building, he is destroying. The truth of the matter is that Mao Sampa is being used by somebody, we don't know who. But people must realize that people use you like toilet tissue and flush and walk away. I don't know what will be left of Mao Sampa if peradventure the courts rules in favor of the other faction. I'm just assuming. assuming. Yeah. If, if things didn't go the Mao Sampa route, where will be his career? Is he being used by the government in power, for instance, which most people have said it looks like he's a sponsored, they have called him a stooge, they've called him this and that. If it is true, is it true that is aware that maybe this government might consider adopting him as their candidate in Matero or a running mate in 2026? Is he risking all of that? He has got small babies and another one has just come. On oh, the, yeah, we saw that on, one. On, on, hey, the on, brother on, is busy, yeah. On the scene, you understand? Yeah. So he needs to have this bigger, <laughs> bigger picture. I don't know whether he's been sponsored or he's doing it out of conviction. Uh, whatever he's doing, he's finishing his political career. There are some things that logic must kick in and tell you that I think I'm on a wrong trajectory. But unless you realize yourself, Mao Sampa is in the hands of whoever is using him. Uh, there's once I said in politics, unfortunately, there will always be useful idiots. Right. <laughs> Let's hear from Ambassador. Can Mao Sampa manage to either fire these big wigs? we've just mentioned. I think Mao Sampa in this political discourse, in my view, is probably not even worth mm. a discussion on such an important television but station. Like, I mean, yeah, he's, yes, but let me... He's yeah, let, let, let me, let me get there. I, I think he is irrelevant. Mm. Uh, the 
he only becomes relevant at the fact that he's a destructive force right. as the uh, pastor has mentioned he is totally irrelevant <clears throat> As far as you go in uniting the country, mm -hmm. he is totally irrelevant in as far as you go into the discourse of ensuring that there is greater democracy. The president, the 60th president of Zambia, the former president, uh, mentioned it clearly when making relevance to, I mean, uh, 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 reference to him that mm -hmm. there is a clear, the pastor did not want, he's a very careful man. That, that there is a clear distinction that he is actually a stooge, mm. that they have established that uh, he is under the control of uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the current administration in order to weaken the main opposition party and make it easier for the uh, current ruling status quo in mm. case we came to an election in 2026 to make it easy. It boils down to what President Edgar Lung mentioned in his rare press statement mm -hmm. that one of the main issues that you have to look at is he said it is mind-boggling that today you have the courts, the police mm -hmm. and the National Assembly almost colluding. He said a meeting of minds, to use his words. The reason he said, I mean, meeting of minds is supposed to be a positive thing, isn't it, PK? Mm -hmm. But a meeting of minds on institutions that are supposed to be enjoying a separation or autonomy mm -hmm. means a compromise. And he actually mentioned a compromise. The reason for this was simple. If something goes wrong into the judiciary, then the legislature should be able to check it. If something wrong goes if something goes wrong into the legislature, then the executive should be able to check it. Hence the reason there has to be greater autonomy and independence. So he says what has happened here today and now is that we have seen a collision, not even implicit, but explicit collision of the judiciary, the legislature, and the executive that... When there is this meeting of minds, means there's been a compromise and democracy mm. has been diluted. And all of us that have fought for this democracy after 27 years of President uh, Kenneth Kaunda's 27 year rule of power must be getting concerned. Mm. Just under a minute, Ambassador, before you conclude, what were the takeaway uh, keynotes from uh, the press uh, held by ECL before I come to PK. Just under a minute. Uh, just under a minute because yeah. I know uh, PK holds much stronger views mm -hmm. on this one. And then I am also almost seen always as compromised because I was uh, an ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary. Well, but uh, under the, the, uh, a, a journalist in you the, doesn't die. I, I, I yeah, know, so but you don't need to apologize know, whatsoever. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. You are the first person you to tell me that. Apology, Shake my hand. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So my major takeaway from there, one was where the 60th president of Zambia says, let us not relent. Let us not relent as we see KBN TV faces a threat of a shutdown. He said, we should fight to bring back democracy through the judicial process, through the political process, and through a civil process. Very, very important. And then he says, but you have seen what has been happening, that we have been having problems on all these fronts. So let us use whatever means within the law. He repeated that twice. said, I repeat within the law. The reason I am saying this is because some overzealous people may want to come up today and say there was a civil disobedience that was called for. You will know what happened to our brother, Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba, mm. when he said, let us have a shutdown. Mm. He ended up in police yeah. detention. Mm. And then after, the 60th president of Zambia said, let us use everything that we have 
to protect our democracy. Mm -hmm. There is that young man, uh, I respect him so much, the member of parliament, I think it's Kamfinsa. Right. Uh, what's brother Kamombe? Kamombe. Yeah, you know, he did a blend of the Bembar and uh, English <laughs> where he spoke about uh, the fact that, you know, uh, we got back into multi-party democracy in order to have the ability to choose our own leaders. Now we are experiencing some sort of a status quo where we're going to be told who is going to be our leaders. By the and this shall not be. Yes, by the UPN. Mm. Anyway, I like the way you bring out some yeah, things I don't want to say. You say them. From, from, from <laughs> you know. yeah. Anyway, so yeah. I will end there <laughs> right. and hand the mic over. Let's hear from the past. PK as well. <laughs> um, PK, what is your uh, takeaway points from there? Um, I think for, for the PF and what they have gone through, <laughs> that press conference addressed for the first time in a long time by the former head of state was a very pivotal, very important. Uh, it set the tone for where they should be going and headed as a, as a party. Now, uh, the former president himself is a very critical figure in the scheme of things as far as the the outlook of 2026 um, uh, is concerned. He will perhaps try to be on the, bar on the ballot or he will try not to be on, on the, the ballot. ballot. Right. But to what, be or not to be. Yes, but, <laughs> whatever, but whatever the case, mm. he's the deciding mm. factor. Right. He is the one who can galvanize the opposition party right. together uh, and say, guys, we're going to field one candidate right. he is a huge factor and that press conference trust me has changed the course of how politics is going to be played going forward and let me pause and say from the analysis perspective i personally do not subscribe to the statement attributed to socialist party president dr fred Membe, where he said we are nowhere close to an alliance. Oh. That statement is ill-timed from an analysis point of view because the opposition right now is the time for them to be seen okay. to be working together. To collect for him to, to issue mind. that statement, it's divisive, it is ill-timed, and he seems to be setting himself above everyone else. That can hurt his, uh, his uh, chances. Right. It hurt the chances of President Haka in the Ichlema during... President the Michael Sata. Oh, yes. Michael Sata wanted to go into a pact with the President Aga Indi Chilema. He refused. Uh, and it hurt his chances Michael Sata became president. Right. Because Mr. Aga Indi Chilema at the time, he felt that he was a, he, he was a cloth cut above mm. the rest. Mm. I put this in the same envelope as the statement from, uh, you know... ACL. Uh, no. Mr. Fred member. Right, right. Mm. He, he shouldn't be saying we are not anywhere close to, because the ECL press conference was to say, I have spoken to my colleagues let's in the opposition, the let's democracy. work together, let's mm. save democracy. This is the time that Mr. Member should also be saying, actually, I also agree. Whoever it is that the opposition is going to choose, we will work together. Right. Not to say we are nowhere anywhere mm. close to uh, that alliance. was yes, that was mm. ill-timed. That I must submit. But I like the fact that uh, President Edgar Chagalungu has come out. Whether he will be on the ballot or not, he will be a factor in deciding the direction of the opposition. I can I, I can guarantee you mm. they will work together going forward. Whether Socialist Party wants to be a part of it or not, mm. the opposition is going to unite. All right, let's uh, close and uh, go to another story. Director, we're going to like, just going to jump one story. Uh, but I think one critical aspect here for me is a story where uh, EFZ uh, has condemned the ongoing conversation by the Attorney General. A number of people have been compensated as we speak right now. Honorable Maritita is one of them. We've seen also Frank Tayali, the Transport Minister, and uh, other some UPND-aligned uh, sympathizers. Quickly PK, and a minute, I go to Ambassador, I jump to another story. I saw that story and the clip from mm. uh, Bishop Mwenda. In fact, he called it, stop that reckless mm. 
conversation. Mm. What's strong, right? He's very strong. He didn't mince his words. That was Kason Rumwenda. No, no, that um, was Bishop Andrew Mwenda. Oh, Bishop Andrew Mwenda. Yes, yes. Oh, the evangelical yes. fellow. Yes, yes, yes. He was, sorry, yes. He was yes. very uh, strong and he just please told, go ahead. Yeah. He just told whoever is concerned and say, in fact, one line he, there I remember he said, if the if the attorney general does not mm. permit any other future claims for compensation, if it does not permit them to go through a full, you know, legal process, mm. he will stand accused in the public uh, court of opinion Indeed. as aiding yeah. the looting of public resources. Now, mm. that is a strong word coming from the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia. And uh, rightly so, because he, this is not the only person who is expressing concern a lot more other civil society organization to church the law association of zambia and so many including by the way mm. upnd officials themselves i saw uh, uh, something from the upnd uk mm -hmm. exactly saying, UK branch. yes yeah. uk branch upnd they are saying whoever is doing this thing to compensate people a wrong is a, a wrong. wrong so within the upnd camp even there they know these compensations are totally wrong and they are misplaced in my view and i speak uh, as a journalist and from an analysis point of view mm -hmm. there is no way you can give uh, chief mukuni and uh, 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 chief mukuni's wife and five others <laughs> half a million each mm. and uh, later on 10 people were accused for treason together with the president uh, the president uh, i think 1 million mm -hmm. each that's 10 million already <laughs> okay yeah. then there is no way mr frank, frank tayali uh, gets 450000 450000 and 80000 kwacha for his lawyer on top of that we will continue paying you mm -hmm. as a minister we will continue giving you fuel as a minister we will continue but meanwhile here is your change you can go to dubai if you like uh, and and then mr oh, yeah. mualited Mm. 900,000 and now we That's understand a million, and now we understand that there is this man who liked fighting uh, William, William Banda mm. who is Mr. claiming Tiken. yes who is claiming 3 million 3 million yeah and this trend might go on if not challenged. And I like the fact that the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia and mm. many Zambians mm. have spoken because uh, IP mm. It is ridiculous that we have failed to repair a cancer machine at UTH, but we have the money to pay a political cadre and say it is compensation. Why can't we repair <laughs> cancer? We are taking cancer patients to Tanzania. To Tanzania. Yeah. These priorities by the government are warped and misplaced. They must be condemned. And I like the fact that the Evangelical Fellowships of Zambia has spoken and spoken very strongly against this. And I'm hoping the Attorney General, from what I understand, by the way, is a pastor. And, ah. and Attorney General, I, I have I've from come... Sure. I don't know, but I've just come pastors, to understand yeah? that he's a pastor. Yeah. Listen, sir, in, 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 in Christianity, <laughs> as you know the Bible, Jesus Christ is all for justice. Jesus Christ is all for fairness. Jesus Christ is all for, um, you know, truth. So, as, as Attorney General, do the right thing, sir. Let not posterity judge you harshly on the other side of the coin. Right. Let's hear from Ambassador. For me, Please, on this minute. issue, which has already been well expounded by PK, I would like to pick up from the wisdom of State Council, George Chisanga, member of parliament for Lukasha mm. uh, uh, constituency and uh, chief legal advisor for the uh, uh, main opposition party, the uh, Patriotic Front, mm. who actually said what is happening is illegal. He said, he gave a specific example of the awarding of the 450,000 kwacha mm. uh, to uh, Frank Tayari. Yeah. Uh, and 80,000 kwacha to his lawyers in talking broadly about all these cases. He said he was ashamed to be part of the bar and witness what a travesty of justice that is going on. He said there is a committee that is supposed to look at the compensation and fees and that, that is only supposed to happen when a case has gone the whole nine yards. Right. When a judge or a magistrate has looked at the pros and the cons, mm. they have eventually found that there is a prima facie case 
they have eventually found that it was true that IP, you know, was extremely damaged and traumatized right. by somebody who pointed a toy gun at him and that he will never live the same way that he ever did. And an example he gave on Frank Tayari was that if you look hmm. at the fees that are supposed to be paid, Frank Tayari would have never gotten anything between before between a hundred and a hundred and fifty thousand mm. kwacha. His lawyers would have also never gotten anything beyond twenty and thirty thousand kwacha. I, I may want to agree what with you. happened, who was adduced, what witness mm. was adduced, how <laughs> many man hours were put forward? What time did the courts of laws lose? Because that's how you quantify things. Mm. You cannot come up and say, ah, you know, I, uh, I didn't run the race, but pay me the same amount of money that you paid uh, 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 PK. You didn't finish the race. You didn't even start the race. But then, just in conclusion, because you, I know you said that we should be brave, is mm. from Frank Tayari to William Banda to Unfortunately, the families of those who lost their lives. What about when Emmanuel Mwamba? What about when Mr. Kungo's family? What about when Stephen Kampiongo, and actually George Sanga State Council gave this example. Stephen Kampiongo and nine others were acquitted. What about Mumbi Piri? What about Chris Zumani? The list is Endless. so long. The president this is money, wrong. The president is wrong. This money, we have much bigger issues. Yeah. We have corrupted drugs in mm. hospitals. We do not have enough fertilizer for people uh, they, that have been in farming. We understand now they're getting medas. Hmm. Shouldn't we have directed the 450,000 kwacha we are giving Frank Tayari to buy a couple of uh, uh, fertilizer bags? Hmm. Shouldn't we, we direct yeah. the same money that we are giving to Mrs. Mukuni hmm. to buy some basal fertilizers? I think we should be looking most of it, especially from our president, who is actually a farmer, and understands that a hungry man is an angry man and mm. understands that what you put in into agriculture today has a much bigger ripple effect positively mm. in the future. Permit the ambassador to just speak up at least to two calls uh, before sure? we go, or mm. no time is gone already. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were just getting <laughs> warm. Are you sure? <laughs> today the, 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 the public can also wait. <laughs> We have to exhaust our. We time. always wait for that. Right? I, I know, right? A, I mean, there's a very a strong, I mean, topic that is coming in. But let me just uh, pick up with two, if I can manage uh, okay. this evening. But before that, um, all right, all right, I've got a caller. I don't know. There's no number on the screen, but they're always calling. Caller, good evening, and welcome to the program. Yes, good evening, my moderator. Good evening. Uh, you've got a minute. Tell us your name. <laughs> Good evening. Please go ahead, General Chong.
Gawai minine pakishinka vikozi ya watu wa lechura Ewe funde Freedom of expression yuta ile wongwa wino Freedom of expression is not here And the democracy is linking But they are busy praising themselves Avantu hewa fili uku vachashi ya tewe nere kukui tashi ya iyo If you are a good leader avantu hawa fili uku tashi ya Na tote la general chongo Thank you so much general chongo we appreciate you All right, um, so let's see. We have to conclude. I think I've got no option but to conclude. <laughs> Pique and uh, Ambassador. One thing, you know, I was reading somewhere, and uh, the, the, the information has it that uh, Attorney General actually refused in the first place, declined to pay uh, Honorable Botayari that amount of money. He was against. But who signed? That's a question I have. Because it's a state, so the state versus, it's people why versus. Why this question for me, PK and yeah. Ambassador, is important? Because you're talking about the independence that we talk about in the three arms of government. Mm. So what has come out in the media is that uh, the Attorney General was literally against. It's possible. But look, what's happening in, in, the, in the UPND government, uh, almost everyone can see the glaring irregularities that in one breath at parliament, which is uh, the makers of the law, can uh, uh, you know, admit something and appro uh, approve it. And against give, the law. Against in the law. breach of the constitution. And reject something related to the same. Mm. You go to, um, to, um, to, to the, the other arm of, of, of government, mm. the judiciary. judiciary. Okay. You find that even there, those questions are being asked. Yep. You go to the other arm of government well, related to the police and the uh, registrar of society, mm. where you understand that a PS, the PS and the a new appointee mm. as registrar says, here, yeah, go ahead, update this. Mm. You understand? So that level of manipulation can only tell you one thing, that there must be a, a bigger factor, a, a huge hand somewhere. Mm. That is the a hand of God. Iwe. <laughs> Iwe. Do, do what you, if you, if you know what is good for you. Yeah. If you want that job, yeah. do that. Mm. that. That's pretty much really... Don't bite the finger that, that feeds, feeds you. you. And <laughs> it, for many Zambians, when you read, whether it's in the news diggers, mm. the must, uh, when you read... Uh, even the blogs of the of the UPND supporters themselves. Today, there was a post by uh, the the record photographer, mm. you know, uh, who said um, uh, this is what what's his name? Chela Tukuta. Chela Tukuta. Who we said, don't even know whether those are even his real names. Who said? Because no, when he was Cornelius convicted, he had uh, Cornelius. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, which which even the UPND supported the uh, media. You know, uh, yellow gutter media called um, Causeway mm. grabbed that and put it on their page and say, "What is this photographer saying?" And all Chela Tukuta said is, mm. "Sometimes you regret the vomit what you vomited because you were hoping to have a better meal." And they are saying, "What does this mean?" And everyone now began to say, "He's telling you that the PF was better than the UPN." <laughs> so what I'm saying is, even within their camp as UPN disappointed, there's discontent. They are, yeah. There's discontent. They have, they have started seeing actually that uh, what they expected. There's too much rhetoric from the from the leadership, right. uh, which does not match their, you know, um, what do you call this? It doesn't match their. Um, their actions mm. indeed yeah indeed. all right we have to go ambassador your closing remarks i know there are two topics of uh, the acquit of uh, chris manizimba we we'll still come back for it next week indeed yeah no uh, for me what is happening locally is very very important but you also know that i have this passion of what is happening in the middle east and i'd like to yeah, close sure. with your permission as on usual that. 16,000 people have now died. 16,000 Palestinians have died <coughs> needlessly. 6,000 of them are children. Others still remain buried in rubble. 4,000 of them <coughs> are women. And there seems to be a, a concern now that uh, even the Americans that have supported the war or self-determination of Israel, <coughs> the French 
and everybody else are beginning to say, Israel, please slow it down. These are children that you are killing, and these are women that you are killing, and they have no horse in this race. And having gone back on that, I mean, I just wanted to bring it, because, you know, conflict may appear as if it is far, but last time we discussed, I think you remember that PK said that Egypt is not far. Yeah. It's a plane flight away. Having gone back, my concluding re remarks, if you may allow me, mm. is to look into the TV screen and say, President Haka in the HLM, 30, 40, or 60 illegal miners have died. Sir, what are you still doing in Dubai? Don't you think you should come back to Zambia and mourn with the 50 or 60 families in Zambia that have lost their breadwinners illegally? Why don't you come and give them some sort of comfort and that instead of people dying, doing illegal mining, you will create them jobs like you promised. Okay. My concluding <laughs> remarks, I will take it back to the press conference where uh, the former head of state spoke. And there was another you know, young man uh, who spoke, a member of parliament for Kamfinsa, who said if they do not... Kangombe, right? If, yeah. If the courts do not give us justice, we will give ourselves justice. justice. Very fair comment. Mm -hmm. The reason he said that, and I, I, I am saying this because now we are beginning to understand that the government is looking for ways of charging him with something for saying that. No, why would you really think of that when they apply for a, a, permit. a permit to hold a rally, you, you can't, you give, can't them. give them. Yeah. So they, all they are saying is if you are failing to listen to, to us, we, we will find other means of communicating with our people. Just like what happened in 2021. The, the, the PF was heavy-handed, but the Zambian people gave themselves a leader of their choice. Mm -hmm. And they chose against all odds, against the, <laughs> the heavy-handedness of the, the police and all of that. The Zambian people gave themselves a leader. Mm -hmm. I do not think that you should even ever begin to think that when Kangombe says, we'll give ourselves justice, that you begin to look for what to charge him with. That is evil. That is uh, totally, totally, you know, um, uh, and called for. Kangombe is a Zambian like every other. If the police are failing to give the PF a platform to, you know, mobilize themselves, they will mobilize and give themselves justice through the ballot 2026. Is that a crime? Right. That's not a crime. Thank you so much, PK, and uh, thank you so much, Ambassador, for coming through. I hope to see you next week by the grace of God. Allow me to appreciate you as well, the viewers out there. I know that a number of you are still calling, but unfortunately we have to go and remember that in broadcasting time is quite limited. Otherwise, uh, thank you so much for watching. Let's uh, meet next week. This has been IP. May God bless Zambia. May God bless Mother Africa. Good night.